give you a quick testimony. I was not raised in church. It was not because we were wicked or we were evil people. Uh, we just didn't go to church. It was not in our cultural family experience. Uh, we would go to church every once in a while. I can remember maybe one year going to church at Christmas, maybe going at Easter. That's a lot of church. So we didn't go for like five more years. And so just, this is a lot and when you don't go. And so we just didn't go to church. Uh, we worked the weekends. We had a family business raised in a tourism town called Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And, uh, and so my dad had business across the beach. And so we worked the weekends. Maybe you've had to have a job before where you worked the weekend or you, you have a job down. Thank God for online and multiple services. And, and so those things happen. And uh, we were working. And, and, you know, so I would have never come to church. We were, I would have never come to Christ by coming to church. It would just would have never crossed my path to go to church. Um, but so thank God a church came to me. Uh, I, I love what happens in the rooms that we have and the campuses, and all the spaces that we have. And I thank God for what happens in the building. But I think the best thing about the church is what happens from the building. And, and when, we're, when we're released to be, to be the hands and feet of Jesus in our world. And so a church uh, had a, was growing in South Carolina, and they launched a campus like you do. Uh, one of the ways you reach people is through launching campuses. It's just, it's just a known fact. It's one of the ways you reach lost people. So they launched a campus, and out of that, they were growing. And after a couple of years, there were a couple hundred people. But they had a missionary pastor who led that church who was thanking God for their growth. But he just knew that let's, let's keep reaching outside the walls of the church. And thank God for what we do in, in overseas, but let's, let's reach our own community. So they had an idea to reach their own community just 45 minutes down the street in Myrtle Beach. And there was something that we did at the beginning of every summer called Sun Fun Weekend. And so a lot of people came to the beach then. And I was working there uh, during that weekend. We worked nonstop uh, since it was a family business. And I remember being there and seeing this group. Later on, I found out about this, this group that was there on the beach, up and down the beach. And, and they were, had a cross with them and they had some ice chests and they were handing out these little sheets of paper. And I watched them all day long on Thursday and all day long on Friday. And what I, what I, I was, re I, I noticed that they were doing some things that I, that, that, that were awesome, but they were doing some things that other groups were, were, were doing, were not doing. And so they didn't have a bullhorn. They weren't screaming at people. They weren't yelling at people. So I just thought it was interesting. It looked like they were having conversations. And, 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 and on Saturday, I saw them out there again with that cross and different things. And so uh, uh, later on that afternoon, uh, one of the, the gentlemen came by with the cross and he stopped at our little, our little booth, our little stand. And, and uh, come on, slinging that 14 karat gold, come on, uh, rope on a chain. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. Everybody need a little herringbone necklace. And, and so we were selling that 14 karat gold. And he parked his cross and leaned his cross up against our booth and began to have a conversation with me. And it was a very kind conversation. It was a, he inquired, it was solid. It was, it was truthful. It was, it was grace filled. And, and, and during that time, he looked at me after about 20 minutes and he looked at me and he said, he said, would you like to receive Christ right now? And I could pray with you to receive Christ right at this second. Would you pray with me? And I said, no, 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 I'm not about to do that. I mean, we, I don't even know you. We just started dating. I mean, I, we, I mean, all you said was hello. And so, you know, I'm not sure about this. And, and, and it was, his response was entry. You know what he said to me? He said, that's fine. He said, but one day you will. Okay. And he handed me a little sheet of paper. Later on, I would realize that it would be called a gospel track. It's a gospel on a sheet of paper with a, on the back of it. He said, there's a prayer on the back of it. We would know it as a sinner's prayer. He said, one day when you get to the end of your rope until a moment you pray that prayer and receive Jesus. He left for about 20 minutes, came back, brought me a snow cone. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Brother knew his way to my heart was a grape snow cone. <laughs> I remember that evening leaving Saturday night about 2 a.m. working all day, walking down Ocean Boulevard and noticing thousands of these sheets of paper blowing in the wind because you could see them everywhere. But guess what? Not all of them were on the ground. There was one of them in my pocket. It's amazing how God will use one moment, one witness, one small group, one prayer, one offering, one encouragement. And two weeks later, through a series of events, 
I had that sheet of paper by my bed. I'd thrown it away a couple times and my mother had dug it out of the trash can and put it back by my nightstand because she knew I was a heathen. Come on. Come on. Where you at them ex-heathens? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Ha! That heathen small group. And, and, I, and, I, and so that, that evening, I picked up that sheet of paper and I, I, I read that sheet of paper and I prayed a sinner's prayer on June the 21st by an out, from an outreach from a church I've never been to, people that I've never met, somebody paid for that, that gospel track, they gave a gift, they, they gave an outreach, they had an idea, and I came to Christ. Why? Because you never underestimate the power of one. You never underestimate the power of one done in Jesus' name. The Bible says if you give one cup of water in my name, it's like you've done it unto me. It's the power of one. I don't know about all the sheets of paper that were thrown down that evening, but I'm not worried about all the ones that were thrown down. The only one that mattered to me was the one that found its way to me. Because when you're lost, you're wondering, you're not sure, the one that matters to you is the one that finds you. Jesus tells a story about it in Luke 15. He tells a whole chapter. He gives a whole set of parables about things that are in ones. One lost coin, one lost son. And my favorite story out of that chapter is the, the story of the, the lost sheep. I'm going to read it to you. It says in Luke 15, verse 1, now the tax collectors and sinners were gathering around to hear Jesus, which I think is incredible. The, just, the, the, just people were listening to Jesus. It's like his small group. He was having a small group with, with, with broken, wounded, messed up humanity. And Jesus is so comfortable with those that other people are not comfortable with. He's actually with the ones that the others don't want him to be with. Because look what happens. It says, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. He welcomes them. That word welcome actually means he gives them time, he receives them, and he's inviting to sinners and, and, and those that are, that, are, that, are, that are away, the ones that we feel like should be in the group, he's allowed in the group. The ones that we are trying to keep out, he's letting in. And they mutter, they talk about him as if he doesn't know what they're saying. Have you ever been somewhere and you felt like somebody was talking about you? And they say, they say I know I've got my animal print shirt on, but they're trying to hate on my animal print. You talking about me? No, yeah, yeah. what you saying? He knew they were talking about him. So he tells them a story, what? To reveal their heart. Their, their heart of, of pushing back the ones that he's trying to pull in. And it, it's such a reflection. He shows them a mirror of how they have forgotten the heart of God. And he says, he says, he says suppose one of you has 100 sheep and loses one. Just one. Just 1% loss. Doesn't he leave the 99? Wow. And, and, and go into the open. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? Question mark. He's asking it like a question. Doesn't he do that? Like, of course he would. It's so obvious it's the right thing to do. But in the natural, you think, no, that's not the wise thing to do. Why would you leave 99% and be concerned about 1%. Does it make sense? He says, but he goes and he finds it. And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders, goes home, and then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, rejoice with me. I found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, everybody say same way. There will be more rejoicing, not less rejoicing, but more rejoicing in heaven over one, one, one sinner who repents 
than over 99 righteous people who do not need to repent. It doesn't mean that the 99 people are not important. It doesn't mean that there's not rejoicing over the 99. Those 99 have already repented. He's wanting to rejoice over the one that hasn't. The 99 are super important. I think that's an amazing, it's amazing how God is good with math. Glory to the Lord. I'm not real. There's times I've not been good with math. It's amazing how he's good with numbers. He's got, he keeps, he keeps good numbers. He tells a story about numbers. There's a hundred. One's missing. He's left with 99. But then he goes and finds the one. So the hundred is restored. It's amazing how God counts. I was asking the team here. Some of the amazing things that have happened with the multi different campuses and all the outreach. We see the things that happened in Peru and all those amazing things. But really the most important number, I asked him about the most important number. That's how many people have received Christ maybe since, since the beginning of this year. What would that number be since the beginning of 2019? And I'm not talking about those online or maybe those who have prayed that we don't know. I'm talking about kind of recorded ones that have come here to, and, and been in these environments, been in these services, and, and they gave me that number. I want you to see the number of people that have come to Christ since the beginning of this year. 1,300 salvations. That's a lot of people. 1,300 people. Now, think about this. There's 660,000 churches in America. The average church in America on a good Sunday is 125 people. That's 10 times the amount of people that the average church just has. And that's how many people have gotten saved here at Victory. Why? Because of your generosity, because of a small group, because you joined a team, team because you're protected. That many people came to Christ. That is massive. But what Luke says is it's really not 1,300. Luke 15 says it's really one times 1,300 because God counts by ones. It's one. It's one. It's one. It's not counting by 5, 10, 20, 30. God Almighty sees every individual that walked, that prayed. And aren't you glad he counts by ones? You're glad he counts by ones if you're the one. You're glad he does a group count? Oh, about 150 over here. God don't count like that. One. 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 Because the cross is for one. Oh, it's for the whole world. And the blood of Jesus is for the whole world. But it's not some blanket redemption. The cross of Jesus, he's the only one that has the ability to love each one of us as each individual one. There's nothing else. You think about that. One makes a difference. Your one matters. I wrote down a few little values that I believe this church has been built on all these years. I see it in your pastors. I've seen it in the history and the legacy. I want to encourage you. This kind of church you're in. It's the heart of your pastor is that every number has a name. Please don't ever forget that. Every number has a name. And God knows that name. Not only does it have a name, every name has a story. Oh, and, and the redemption of God, the restoration of God, the forgiveness of God can well handle your story. No matter the ups and downs, the good, the bad, the ugly, the pain, the good chapters, the, the horrible chapters, the, the chapters that didn't end well, the, the chapters that end on a, on a highlight, all the stories of our life, God Almighty sees every story. Why? Because every story matters to God. Every one of them, every story matters to God. It's how the cross works. He sent his one son to die for us. If that's all that was needed, that's all, that's, that's all there was. His one son to die for us. I thought a lot about that Luke 15. What an what a outrageous, unconditional story that Jesus tells 
So the other day I was thinking about it and I was in one of our offices at Highlands. And it was over by our chapel and it's a real nice office, like a high level office, kind of, whew. It's just like, you go over there, feel real spiritual. It's, got like, it's like a spiritual environment. So I went over there and I was thinking about Luke 15, but what I like best about it is it's, it's got some snacks in it. I love the power of the snack. It's got great snacks. So I was over there just in the presence of the Lord and doing some snackology. And uh, I love it because they got them all in jars. And I was like, oh. So I, I saw a jar and of, of peanut M&Ms. They're my favorite. Ooh. I don't like all them other newfangled flavors. Like cotton. They got carrot cake M&Ms. That ain't right. So I was looking at the jar of peanut M&M's um, and I was spiritual. So this was all as unto the Lord. So I thought, I wonder how many M&M's are in there because I want to eat them all. <laughs> Since I'm in the presence of the Lord, there'll, there'll be no, it's, the Lord be blessing it upon me. So it's okay to do that. So I started counting them and I realized, I wonder how many 100 M&M's are. So this is 100 peanut M&M's. It's 100 the Bible says that a shepherd had a hundred sheep. And I don't know when, I don't know how, but one of them gets away. Because I want you to remember this. Sheep are prone to wander. They have no sense of direction. They can't even protect themselves. Sheep don't even snarl. I mean, they just, they just are so helpless. And, and sheep, sheep will nibble themselves away from where they're supposed to be. They don't even know. They, and, and a lot of times, their, their appetites carry them away from the protection. Oh, come on, somebody. Is that not humanity? The Bible says in Isaiah 53, we all are like sheep and have gone astray. Don't even know how I got here. Can't even figure out how, why, why I'm far from God. Don't even know how this addiction got in my life. Can't even figure it out why I'm over here. And, the, and, and most shepherds will tell you that when a sheep is lost, it runs in circles. Falls down and can't get back up. The shepherd counts. He had 100 yesterday. But when he counts, he had 99 now. 99 out of 100 ain't bad. If I'm a car salesman, I've got 100 cars. And I sell 99, ooh, I'm going on vacation. If I'm shooting 100 free throws and I make 99, I'm in the NBA. It, when I was growing up, if I could make 100 on a spelling test and Dino Rizzo makes 99, my mother about to do a Jericho march. Y'all don't know nothing about a Jericho march. 99 is awesome. Who would not work with those percentages? What business owner would not want that? 99 percentile? I will take it all day long. Who would not be happy with 99? You know who's not happy with 99? It's Jesus Christ because he says, I'm going to leave the 99 because one is missing. And if you're the one, you're glad he leaves the 99. And, he, and, the, and the Bible says that he leaves the 99 and he goes looking. Until he finds it. If you've got a lost loved one, they're not alone. Someone's looking for them. Jesus is on a search and rescue. And he fi finally, he, the Bible says, the shepherd finds it. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I love what he doesn't do. You're terrible. What's wrong with you? No, 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 no. The Bible says he takes the sheep, puts it on his shoulders, brings it to the fold, and starts DMing all his friends, texting all his friends, hitting all his friends up, says, you're not gonna believe this. You remember when we had a hundred and I told you I lost one? I found the one I lost. I've got a hundred. Come and rejoice with me. 1,300 ones 
were found in 2019 that were away from God. Come on, Victory. You ought to shout unto God for lost people that come to God through your giving, through your sacrifice. Heaven erupts. Because if you're the one, you're glad he does all that. And what happens is sometimes we forget we were the one. I love everything about that picture of God. Jesus telling that story. He counts by ones. He goes for the ones. Your, your one matters. Without your one, guess what? One is missing. We need you to lead a small group. We need you to be on Dream Team. We need you to be faithful in your tithing and offerings. We need you to notice the broken. Because your one matters. Your one could be the difference in someone else's life. I wrote down three applications, and we'll finish with this, that I find out of Luke 15. Just some applications. You could jot these down. These are so quick and simple. Here's the first thing. All are equally loved, but the lost are the priority. Value of the church. Church will never make sense to you and I unless we remember that. Because we start thinking it's about us. Hey, listen, there's a Niagara Falls of love that's coming your way. Every, every, every worship service, every moment, you are loved, you're loved. Love is coming your way. Love is coming your way. But guess what? Lost a priority. So when I lost my daughter at Disney World, I have three children. I lost one, had two left. I didn't kind of think, well, I'll work with those percentages. <laughs> had three, got two left. No, 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 no. No, no, no. My other children were loved. But they were not the priority at that moment. And I, I had to let them know that, hey, listen, I know we need to go get a turkey leg. I know we need an $800 piece of ice cream at Disneyland. I got issues. But I'm not worried about that right now. You are loved, but I need you to help me find your lost sibling. Because right now the priority is the lost child. Everybody is loved at Victory. So much love from your pastors. But victory only makes sense when you realize that the lost of the party. Here's the second thing to remember, just some values, just some application. You were never lost in the audience of humanity. I want to say that to somebody. It's easy to feel lost today. You can get lost on social media. You can get lost because other people look so successful and so awesome. Sometimes you feel insignificant. You feel like you're not even being counted. Like no one even counts you. That if you're not there, no one even knows you're missing. It's not true. There's a great shepherd. And he keeps good count. And you matter. You're not lost in this sea of humanity. You're not lost in this church. Your one matters. We will not be everything we need to be without your one. And then the last thing, and it's just something to be reminded of, a little application as it relates to church. And that's God reserves heaven's loudest noise when one is served and receives the gospel. It's the loudest noise in heaven. Can I ask you, what do you reserve your loudest noise for? Could it be that we reserve it when people come to Christ? When the one is reached? When the one is served? When the one is cared for, the power of the one. Oh, Lord, help me remember that I'm the one. If, if I'm the one, I'm glad you're searching for the one. Uh, the other day, I'll finish with this story. I had my son in town. I drove him to the airport. It was early in the morning. And he gets out of my car. It's about 4 a.m. And he's going to New York to serve. And he's walking in. And. I just think, wow, I had this dad emotional moment. I just said, Lord, he's not a number in that city. He's my son. He's the one that matters to me. And I had this feeling, Lord, I hope you bring people across this path that would treat him like the one and a son. 
I left there and went over to a gas station. It was early in the morning. There's an area right there by the Birmingham airport that we have a dream center in. We do outreach in. It's a very, to be honest, it's a forgotten community. It's a broken community. It's been marginalized and a lot of pain there. So I stopped in there to get fuel in my truck. And as I'm getting fuel, I noticed around, it's about 420. There's a lot of people in the parking lot. And I just, wow, people are going to work. This, that, as I'm feeling, I realize they're homeless. There's homeless people. They're looking through trash cans and there's about a half a dozen there. And one of them starts moving towards me to the trash can. And, and I, I'm, I don't have anything to, I'm, I'm just kind of, I don't have anything to give them. I've, I've got to get back to the house. And it's like the Holy Spirit whispered to me and said, just like your son is the one, there's somebody's son. They're a one. And uh, the Lord just spoke to me and said, I know you don't want to give them anything because you're busy. You got a lot going on. But I want you to look in your truck and find something to give them from me. Would you give them something from me? How many said the Lord put you in a pickle? <laughs> so I go look at my truck and I, five, I find five $1 bills under my seat in a backpack in a console. He's digging. I said, excuse me, sir. I finished feeling my truck. He said, yeah. I said, I didn't want to give you anything. I had to be honest. And I said, but uh, Jesus told me to give you these, one five, these, these, these five $1 bills. This is from Jesus. He just reaches out and takes those $1 bills, looks at me, and I go to get my truck. He said, hey, my man, you going to pray for me? What is wrong with me? You're now the pastor. I'm going to hell. Because I'm, I'm, I'm a buckethead. I said, man, I'd love to. And I put my arms around him. Arms around him. And uh, I'll be real transparent. It smelled like the street. Mother Teresa was given a tour of her of her homes for the dying in Calcutta. The businessmen and the women were holding their nose, the stench. And they said, Mother Teresa, how do you handle that smell? And she said, Jesus died on a garbage heap. It's the smell that God loves. I just breathed in this odor of humanity. I got done praying with them and and he, he, he held me. He said, I told him about our dream center like you do and serve and all these things that we're powered of it like you are. And he looked at me and he said these words. He said, hey, when you prayed for me, you chased the devil away. He said, you don't know how hard it is out on these streets? Every night trying to find somewhere to lay down, worried about your stuff, somebody messing with you, the thoughts. He said, it's wicked out here. And the devil just follows me around all night long. But when you prayed, you chased the devil away. And it was like the sun came up early in my life. And all I thought about, it was one moment. It was, it was just a few dollar bills. It was one person. It was one prayer. It was just a moment in my life. It took five minutes and five dollars. But God Almighty can use one moment. Don't ever underestimate your one love, your one prayer, your one gift, your one leadership moment. The moment that you notice, the moment that you care. Because God still goes after the one. And you hope he does. When you're that one, or your son is that one, or your daughter's that one, or you used to be that one, you thank God he goes for the one. Because God counts by ones. And if you ever wanted to know what victory is about, that's what this church is about. One person. Amen. Let's bow our heads and let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the cross of Jesus. One cross, one lamb, one savior that died for one and one and one and one. And I'm grateful that there is, there is no one that's wandered too far or that is too lost. That 
you can't reach. So all across this room, just one moment, Pastor Daniel's going to come and help us, going to give an invitation. And as you read in Luke, all of heaven stands at the edge of the streets of gold, waiting on this moment. The band is warming up, the heaven party planners, the heaven event planners, they're all just holding their breath, waiting on one. Maybe you're that one. So you're here today, and I'm not going to have you at this moment stand or come forward. We'll do that in just a moment. But all across this room, if you're here today and you say, Dino, I feel far from God. Maybe you say in honesty, I don't even know how I got to the place I'm at. I don't even know how I ended up here. But I'm, I, I have wandered off the path. And I, I've lived a life where I've been prone to wander. I don't know why. But today, you just want to say yes to Jesus. Maybe again. It's all across this room right before Daniel comes and helps us take a next step and points us to a growth track, and gets us in a small group. All across this room, if you're here and you just say, Dino, can you pray for me? Because I just feel far from God and, and I don't wanna I don't wanna live that way anymore. I'm ready for him to take my sins upon his shoulder, the weight of my failure on his shoulders, and carry me home. All across this room, if that's you, would you just slip up your hand? Hands are going up all across this room. Dino, pray for me. Dino, pray for me. Dino, pray for me. So Father. I pray for every person who raised their hand. Can we all pray this prayer out loud? And Maybe you're here and, and, and you raised your hand. Maybe you didn't, but sometimes it's good just to pray. Maybe you want to pray it from your heart. And that's fine. But all across this room, we just pray this prayer out loud. An invitation to Jesus. Just say, dear Jesus, I give you my life. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I believe that you died and that you rose again. And so today, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for finding me and thank you for bringing me home in Jesus' name. Now, Victory, can we clap our hands and we, can we give our loudest shout for those who made a decision today? Come on, Victory. Let's welcome those home.